and welcome back to The Watchman. Well, Jerusalem is a roadmap of the Bible. King David, Solomon, the prophets, the Maccabees, Jesus, the Apostle Paul, all of them walked the streets of Jerusalem. And beneath the western wall of the Temple Mount, that biblical history dating back thousands of years comes to life today. I recently had a very special tour of the Western Wall Tunnels and it was an unforgettable experience. Take a look. So this is the same Western Wall we can see outside. It's the continuation of it. We're not standing on top of it or beneath it or on the other side of it, just along the same wall, but where it's concealed, where it's hidden. If you look over here at the bottom and with your gaze slowly climb up to the top, you will notice different kinds of construction. You're looking at two different periods. 1400 years ago, when the Muslims first came here, they find parts of the wall ruined, destroyed. They decide to renovate. These small stones over here and the larger ones above them, all the way to the top is 1,400 year Muslim renovation. But from here and all the way down to the valley, we're talking about four stories beneath us, this beautiful symmetric shaped stone with this nice frame around it, aligned so neatly one near each other and one on top of the other with no cement in between to glue the stones together. We call this dry construction, kind of like Lego. This is 2,000 year old Jewish construction. So uh, look at me, don't follow me. I want to show you something. From here, and all the way, going 40 feet along the western wall, 40 feet, that is longer than a bus, you're looking at the largest stone found in the Temple Mount. It is 12 feet high and 14 feet deep. It weighs close to 600 tons. That's equivalent to like a I would say 200 elephants, or if you want it in a modern scale, two airplanes. The big jumbo jets, the transatlantic 747 with the people and the luggage after shopping in Israel. That's heavy, yeah. Um, two big airplanes, one stone, and the big question is how? How do they carve a stone like this? How do they roll it here? How do they lift it up and place it so accurately? I believe a good question deserves even a better answer. The answer is we don't know. Physicists, mathematicians, archaeologists, engineers, historians today don't know how with the lack of technology they had 2,000 years ago, they were able to move something so big. This is a mystery, an enigma. But there is one story I could share with you about the stone. When Titus destroys the city, he sees this big stone. As a tactician, as a, a general, he understands perfectly the symbolic value that the stone has for the Jewish people, for their moral and pride and self-esteem. So you, you have to try to imagine him telling his soldiers, guys, we need to destroy this because we need to break the Jews not only physically, but also mentally, psychologically, spiritually, emotionally. Try to imagine Roman soldiers standing way above us, pushing stones from the wall down to the marketplace below us, stone after stone, row after row, until they get to this big stone. When they do, they huff, they puff, the stone doesn't budge. They try to break it, they try to destroy it, but luckily for us in the end, instead of them breaking the stone, the stone pretty much broke, it, broke them. And they left us this amazing 2,000 year old testimony. Folks, you need to take a tour of the Western Wall Tunnels the next time you visit Jerusalem. Coming up, my final thoughts on why Jerusalem matters to you as a Christian. It's the Watchman, it's Kufi, only right here on TBN.